Nintendo, one of the leading titans in the gaming industries alongside Sony and Microsoft. Nintendo's been in the game for so long they started way back in 1979 with game consoles. The Game & Watch was originally created by Gunpei Yokoi after observing someone on a train interacting with their portable LCD calculators which gave birth to the console. The console was actually released by Nintendo in 1980. The console itself however didn't have interchangeable cartridges and were pretty much packaged with only one game tied to the console. This meant we got a bunch of variations for the consoles. Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong Jr, Donkey Kong 2, Ball which was the first game in the Game & Watch series, Zelda, Donkey Kong Hockey, Boxing, Donkey Kong 3, Fire Attack, Donkey Kong, Turtle Beach Dove, and Donkey Kong Psycho. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a lot of Donkey Kong variations. See, the Donkey Kong titles were one of the first on the consoles to have the modern cross D-pad design, which led to the console being quite popular. The console was so popular, it actually earned a Technology and Engineering Emmy Award. After the Game & Watch, we headed on to the Nintendo Entertainment System. This console didn't receive a lot, if not any, limited edition release. I mean, sure, you got Nintendo Famicom for Japan and the NES for North America, but later down the road, the console didn't receive a lot of limited editions, just add-ons and accessory like the Power Glove and Rob. These aren't really limited editions, just accessories that go with your already NES system. But then you got the top loader. This one's more of a console redesign rather than a limited edition, but I thought it would be cool to at least talk about it. The console itself is pretty cool and is a cool redesign from the normal NES. It also brought us the dog bone controller, which I'm a pretty big fan of. The thing looks and feels like a joy compared to the normal NES controller. Now that's not to say that the NES controller is bad or anything, I just prefer the dog bone design to this one. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System in terms of limited edition variations isn't really that good either. Uh, limited editions were mostly games bundled with the console itself. All in all, not a promising start. I mean, yeah, it's cool that you can get Zelda and Donkey Kong bundled with the console, but I could just buy it normally and that would be it. Moving on to the Retina Destroyer, otherwise known to normal people as the Virtual Boy. The console was probably one of Nintendo's biggest mistakes next to releasing Star Fox Zero. It just looks so uncomfortable to even just look at. In terms of console limited editions besides the console, you know, releasing, it had none. I mean, it had a blockbuster suitcase and that was pretty much it. Like what am I supposed to do with this thing? Rob a bank with it? After numerous console limited edition tries, Nintendo really upped up their games with the N64. And oh my god, this thing is limited edition heaven. You got the normal gray N64 console, which all in all doesn't look that bad. Generic if abundant more than anything. Seriously, I have two of these consoles and I could probably get another one if I really wanted to. Aside from the normal gray one, you have the special Pikachu edition one that comes bundled with Hey You Pikachu and a mic. I had so much fond memories of this as a kid. But playing it now, it really doesn't hold up as well as I wanted it to. Moving further on with the N64, it had a bunch of colors and bundles. The colors are as followed. <clears throat> Normal Grey Special Pikachu Edition, Ice Blue for Europe, Black Bundle for Zelda Ocarina of Time, Gold for Japan, Grey Purple, Star Wars Razor for Brazil, Gold Control Bundle for Toys R Us, Charcoal, Clear Blue for Europe, Gold Control Bundle for United Kingdoms, Ice Blue for North America, Donkey Kong Green Bundle, Grey for Europe, Smoke Black for Taiwan, the, the IQ Console Only for China, Charcoal Black for Taiwan, Midnight Blue for Japan, Jungle Green for Europe, Watermelon Red for North America, Fire Orange for North America, Charcoal Black Pokemon First Edition, Pikachu Light Blue Console Limited Edition for Japan, Pokemon Orange Limited Edition for Japan, and Clear Red for Japan and Smoke Black for Europe. The N64 had so many colors to choose from that it was pretty much common to go over to your friend's house and see different colored consoles than yours. It was almost as if Nintendo started to realize what a limited edition was. Then the GameCube game. It had tons of nostalgic games and I had so many fond memories of playing the console. But limited edition sucks. Did someone ask for MTV? The MTV limited editions were cool, but hearing the letters MT and V didn't really scream out Nintendo GameCube for me. I mean, I would have loved if Nintendo took these design ideas and implemented them with other Nintendo properties. They did this with only one, and that was Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. The design looked sick, but it was only a one of a kind and was a giveaway prize for a contest in Prussian France. It was a real shame because I loved the look of the limited edition. What the hell is this? Only thing that's different from the normal GameCube is the faceplates. Now look, I don't think this looks bad. I think it just looks lazy. 
I mean, the design could have been a dark frosted GameCube with a dark Lugia or the main character on the side. Again, they did this with numerous other limited editions. Tales of Symphonia, Donkey Kong, Thank You ATI, and Metal Gear Solid. What's weird is that most of these faceplate changes were for third party publishers with the exception of Pokemon and Donkey Kong. Not even the Mario series or Zelda got these plate changes, which is kind of weird. We didn't fare any better in terms of limited edition. We had the normal black wing and the normal white wing. The only difference is the color you liked and the model number you get. If you got an RVL001 model, it had GameCube compatibility. If you got an RVL101 model, however, that wasn't compatible with the GameCube. Speaking of disappointment, ah, oh, shit. The Wii Mini, or some like to call it disappointment. I don't get the Wii Mini. I mean, it's a smaller version of the Wii, yeah, but no GameCube compatibility and no online? Why? In terms of limited edition, the Wii had a couple, but to be honest, they weren't as interesting as the GameCube. A notable addition for the Wii was the Art of Wii Limited Edition, a model created by Gary Tuxali. It was only available as a giveaway prize in a Canadian contest in which six one-of-a-kind Wiis were given. Next up, we have the Wii U. God, I love the Wii U. I had so many fond memories of playing Nintendo Land with my brother as a kid. But even I have to admit that the Wii U did make a big splash for Nintendo in terms of sales and was lacking in terms of limited editions. The only limited edition I could find was The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker Limited Edition, which just had a small Hylian border on the gamepad, not even the console. But something the Wii U did amazingly well were the art on the boxes for deluxe editions of certain games. So much creativity went into these. The Splatoon one, the Zombie U one, hell, even the Mario Brothers one looked amazing. My personal favorite would have to be the Tokyo Mirage Fortissimo bundle and the Xenoblade Chronicles X bundle. Unfortunately, the Tokyo Mirage Session one was only released in Japan, which is a shame seeing as though the artwork is just phenomenal. Sure, the game didn't sell well, it would have done better released on the Switch, but god the box art looks so gorgeous. Moving on to Nintendo's latest home console hybrid, we have the Nintendo Switch. And god is this thing limited edition heaven 2.0. You got the Vaporium limited edition, the Blaze Blue Central Fiction limited edition, the Smash Bros Ultimate limited edition, the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee limited edition, oh my god. The Switch had a plethora of limited editions, it's insane. So much variety, it was pretty much hard to choose from. Coping down with the fact that the Switch is a solid game console and the fact that this thing is just printing out money for Nintendo adds to the amazing fact that the Switch is so customizable. The controllers are the same thing altogether. You got the Yoshi Wire Controller, the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Controller, the Smash Bros Controller, the Splatoon Wire Controller, or even the NES Online Exclusive Controllers. The Switch is phenomenal in terms of how much you can customize it. It's insane. There's a bunch more colors and controllers I haven't mentioned, but I'd like to tackle this in another video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the very first episode of Nintendo Classics. Most of the console variations I used in this video were found at consolevariation.com. If you want to go check out some console variations for yourself, you can head on over there. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like. Well, that's going to be it for me. See ya!